Hey guys, my name is Jani Saruloma. And I'm Murat Deleji. And this guy here is Buddy. Welcome to Optima Video the test corner. Okay, let's see what we have here. Jani, did you put $4,000 into a garbage bag? Uh, yeah, it kind of fit in there. It was raining outside, so I thought it's, uh, okay, well, it's a good idea. Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. So yeah, we have here the new Vision Pro and today we are going to unbox it. <clears throat> I love how they make it so that it's, it's an anticipation to open the box. Uh, buddy, no picking. Yanni, you hurt Buddy's feelings. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't worry, Buddy. You'll get to try this out soon. So, here at Opto Fidelity, as part of our work, we often work with and conduct experiments on the newest head-mounted displays. But we already started to work on this area back in 2012. Wow, Yanni, this is so cool. <clears throat> it looks pretty nice. Let's see. Okay, so I heard that there's a display behind this uh, front panel here. What yeah. kind of display is it? Yeah, actually this is a flexible, about 6-inch AMOLED display. Got it. And it basically shows your eyes when you are using the device. Correct. Okay, and well, let's see what do we have here. Okay, this is really well packed. <clears throat> I, I love the quality of even the, the packing yeah. material. Yeah. So how about the displays that we have here? Yeah, so we have uh, two displays also uh, on top of the sub display as main displays. So those are very high resolution, uh, 1.42 inches, uh, OLED on silicon displays. Got it. And then I can see that there's some optics in front of it. So, so uh, what is the field of view of this? Yeah, so we heard that this uh, device is using a very traditional pancake type of uh, optics and we know that the diagonal field of view is about 100 degrees. Okay, 100 degrees sounds pretty high. Have we tested something like that? Yeah, I mean we can go almost up to 140 degrees diagonal with our own optics. Got it, so then it shouldn't be a problem for us. No, it's not going to be. Okay, cool. So then, <clears throat> um, of course, you need to have something that, that kind of simulates human eye to um, to go in there. So how can you get the, the instrumentation actually in the place of the human eye? Yeah, so we have a different type of optics to simulate the human eye. So we have this folded lens, which is mimicking the human eye. So we can actually place it inside the headset over here and we can go into arbitrary positions in the eye box and we can capture the entire field of view in a single shot. Got it. So then even for the mass production, that would be great because we don't need to move around and, correct, and correct. take pictures from many, many locations. So, what other interesting things can this guy do? Uh, so, for example, uh, this device also has fast eye tracking based foveated rendering. So, what does that mean? Well, foveated rendering is a feature that enables uh, quick rendering at high resolution only in, this, uh, only in the region that your, your eye pupils are looking at. Got it. So, <clears throat> so, that means that you only get like a really precise image where you're looking at, but rest of the image is kind of blurry. And that way you, you don't need to calculate so much when you render the 3D scene. Yeah, I think this is for saving the computing power, most likely. So I understand that this device also has cameras here that basically show you the real world on the other side. So is that called mixed reality? Well, uh, Apple defines as a spatial computer that blends digital content into your physical space. But in te technically, this is a video pass-through mixed reality head-mounted display. Got it. So basically, uh, video pass-through is called mixed reality. And then when you actually see the real world through the device, that's called augmented reality. Correct. Correct. Got it. And then <clears throat> I understood that the uh, pass-through uh, performance is like 12 milliseconds, which sounds actually incredibly good. Uh, but I guess uh, we might be able to test that with our system before later on. So, yeah. so we'll see how this actually performs. Um, how about other uh, features? Well, for example, I was surprised that uh, there is no hand controller. So you are basically uh, interacting with the entire UR with different type of gestures. It could be with the hand, it could be with your eye, or it could be with the voice, for example. Well, that's pretty good because you are not going to lose your hand, hopefully. So, <laughs> so uh, because those controllers, they're really easy to lose and then Correct. you can't you know, render the device unusable. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah that, that's really nifty, nifty thing. And yeah, I can see that there's a lot of different kinds of um, <clears throat> instrumentation and cameras here. So we have cameras that are looking down and forward and, and sideways. So 
I guess those are then used used for the tracking of the device. Yeah, so basically this is in and out tracking. I believe that it has more than 10 uh, cameras and sensors in combination. It also has a LiDAR scanner, for example. Yeah. Got it. So that's basically the same type of technology they have already been using, for example, in iPads and, and iPhones for face, face tracking and then also for the 3D imaging. And in this device, they're actually calling that optics ID or optic ID. In the next episode, Buddy gets to try this on. Buddy, do you want to try it? Oh yeah, Buddy's anxious to try it. So stay tuned and follow us on social media to be the first to know the performance of Apple Vision Pro. Thank <laughs> you.